Hello everybody, Adam from developphp.com here once again with another little lesson series that's going to be all about building custom forums into your website. Now here's what a viewer would need to follow this tutorial series through to completion. The first one is you'll need one hour, give or take a few minutes. It may come out to be less than an hour or it may come out to be a little more than an hour, all of the videos combined in the series. Number two, you'll need a website server operating online live with PHP 5 ready to go on it. Now PHP 4 may work out too for all the scripting that we're going to demonstrate, but I'm going to recommend PHP 5 just so yours is exactly compatible to mine. Number three is MySQL database access and an existing table full of members. You could have, you know, two dummy members in your in your members table and a basic understanding of HTML, CSS, PHP, and MySQL. If you don't understand PHP and MySQL at all, what they are and how they work, and this tutorial series will be a little bit too advanced for you. And we're just going to use basic HTML and CSS. So part one here in this video will be all about adding a layer of security to your member session data to make it harder for bad users to impersonate other members in your forum system. So I'm going to be showing you a way to go into your login.php script and add a couple of more session variables. That way we can cross-reference those within our forum system. And you can also add this to any other systems that are on your website if you want an extra blanket of security. And then after we get that set, we'll start building the actual directory for the forum and the index page, the home page for the forum, and everything like that. There won't be very many videos in this series at all. It's going to go pretty quick because it's not a very complex kind of system to get set up in a basic fashion. Now the first thing I'm going to do is go into my website files and open login.php in Dreamweaver CS4, whatever program you want to open it in, notepad, I don't care. I'm also going to go into the scripts folder and open check user log because I might need to alter something in that one as well. So now I have those two open in Dreamweaver. I'm going to go into the part of login.php where the session variables are being created here. Here's the one for ID, there's IDX, and there's username. I want to add two more, one for email and one for the password for each member that logs in. So I can just grab that code, put it right there, and another one right there. Create the session var for their email create the session bar for their password. Now all you have to do is change this right here, row email. We can make this user email. That'll be the sessions variable name. So let's take that, put it here, and then the variable name for the session itself. The session variable name itself will be user email. And we'll do the same with this. We'll just call it user pass. Put it here and here. And make sure you get the right name out of the database that's password. The field name is row password. Put it into a variable called user pass. Then you can sync it in right there into the session variable called user pass. This way, when somebody logs in from now on to Web Intersect, they're going to have two more little session variables created within their browser that will help my website system remember their data. One for the email and one for the password now. now I'm going to go into check user log and see if there's anywhere inside of that where I need to alter things as well. I might need to define these two variables there as well. So let me highlight those and copy them just in case I need to pop them in place. So I'm here in check user log.php. And it looks like we're dealing with the session cookies. If the session IDX is set, then we know that we have their email and their password set as well. So we don't have to look at that code. But if their cookie set and their sessions aren't set yet, and they have the remember me function on the login selected, this is where you're setting some new sessions down here, remember? So we need to get one for the username, the email, and the password going in this check user log script right here. So that means we have to query the database and get that information. You see where we're selecting username and we output it right here in the while loop? We can simply add email. We're going to select their email as well. 
because we already have access to their password which is right here because that's set in a cookie file so I'm just selecting their email along with their username now that way I can put their email and the password and the username into session variables here if they happen to be a user that clicked the remember me checkbox on your login script so I'm going to pop those into place right here okay so you see what I've done I've added these three lines right here one is to session in the username session the user email and the user password the user password variable I simply attained right here from the one that was in place already in the script I didn't add that today this was already in place where we get the user password through the cookie so that gets put into the session variable for user password now the user email I simply got out of the database row along with the username where we were selecting username from my members before I just added select username and email so then I can access that right here and that gets put into a session variable and the username we had all along already right here so now we're setting those session variables username user email and user password inside of check user log and login.php now let me explain the important part of why we just added that and how it adds a little blanket of security to your system okay now here's the danger you want to look out for some people know how to manipulate actually open and alter the cookie files in their browser so maybe they have a a session ID cookie of 5 they can change that to 7 so that it seems like your system is going to sense that they have an ID of 7 or whatever you know what I mean so if they're in there changing those things then they can actually impersonate people within your system so what we're doing by session by setting the email and the user password into session variables now is we can cross reference those as well so some little idiot who wants to try and impersonate people on your site he might go into his cookie files and change you know the ID variable but he'll also if you put these security measures in place in your site he'll also have to guess some users password and their email that corresponds with that username or ID you understand so when you're trying to make the bad guy guess people's password that makes it almost impossible to guess their email and the password mixture especially the mixture of the email and password it's going to be very hard for somebody a malicious user to guess those sort of things so you will pretty much make impersonating a member an impossibility within your system unless somebody gives out their password and their email to somebody else like a dummy most of the systems that I build nobody gets to see anybody else's email but everybody can still bop around and interact within the system and be social but nobody's really going to guess anybody's password I don't think and the only way impersonation could occur past that would somebody would have to actually hijack all the session variables from somebody like using JavaScript or something like that so se session hijacking is a concern but it's very hard to accomplish when you set up the right kind of systems make sure nobody put in script tags into your systems that's usually how it works and they'll put it into a link a malicious user will put in some JavaScript into somewhere where they can input things into your site and if another member clicks on it and it has script attached to it that members session variables can be viewed by that bad person and then they can go into Firefox or something and manipulate their cookie files and their session data to match that person that way they're impersonating them so you gotta watch out what people are putting into your site and you also want to cross-reference their session variables with the password and the email to add an extra blanket of security. So when I go in part two here and I make the forum directory, I'm going to make sure in my PHP that I'm cross-referencing, making sure the user password matches the user ID in the database or wherever I need to check those things. So I just had to throw this part in here and it'll help make your whole complete system more secure if you add those kind of checks to your other mechanisms on your website. So now in part two we can continue forward nice and smooth with building the forum. So stay tuned for part two, buddy.